All right, y'all, give it up for Rodrigo Diaz Concha, the man with a laptop that has two screens. <laughs> Here we go. All That's right, right. stage is all yours. Yeah, two screens. Can you believe that? Okay, so um, there are some scenarios where running large language models locally makes sense. For instance, I'm involved in this project. This is a telemedicine project for prisons. So, of course, those inmates, they need healthcare sometimes, right? So there's no possibility for, you know, taking the prisoner to this other hospital. Uh, that's not possible. You have to have healthcare inside the prison. So it makes sense to have this isolated system. Also in mining sites where those sites, you know, copper or iron or what have you, uh, those sites are in the middle of nowhere, right? They don't have any kind of co connectivity. Um, but of course they need computing power. There are some people on the ground. There are some other people underground receiving data, manual data. And of course, there's a lot of sensors. There's a lot of machines and devices running all the time. So um, the thing is that they are offline and isolated. And in this other project that I'm involved with, uh, kiosks, uh, retail, where, you know, some companies like to know some statistics and knowledge about the customers that are inside the stores, inside the aisles of the, those, uh, those premises. So today I'm going to show you Foundry Local, which is a fantastic technology that was announced two days ago. So Foundry Local is a technology that we can use today for downloading some models and running those models inside your machine or your on-premises servers. Uh, but of course, there are some um, things that I have to tell you. This is a preview technology, okay? So maybe the things that I'm gonna show you today will change in the near future, we don't know. Um, if you want to know more about uh, Foundry Local, you can go ahead and visit the documentation in the Learn side. So you can go ahead and navigate also to the GitHub repo, and here you can find the installer. They have a Winget uh, installer, so you, you, can, you can just execute this command in your, your machine, and that's it. Or if you're running Mac OS, you can use the brew command for installing Foundry Local. I actually use this other technique, which is downloading the installer, the M6 installer. I already did this in the interest of time, of course, because as you can see, uh, it's quite heavy, right? So I downloaded and installed Foundry Local in my machine. So let me show you what's the experience nowadays. So Foundry, you, they have this CLI where you can, you know, list the models that are available for you and you can download some models and you can run those models locally. So for instance, if you type foundry model list, you can see all the different models that are available for foundry local today. We can see that they have Mistral, they have Phi, they have DeepSeq, both 14 billion and 7 billion, and some others, as you can see here on the screen. And most importantly, they have different versions depending on the hardware where you're running Foundry Local. So for instance, when I downloaded 5.3.5 in this machine, the CPU version was downloaded for my machine. And I had to force the GPU version. I passed the model ID so I can, you know, I could download the GPU version of this model. So if I show you this other uh, command, foundry cache list, you can see all the different models that I have in this machine. You, I have both 3.5 CPU and GPU. 
This is important because, as you know, those models are neural networks that need computing power, and most of the time they benefit from a GPU instead of a CPU. Of course, you can run your model with a CPU, but you're gonna experience very slow responses from the model, right? Because those neural networks are a thing, they have billions and billions of parameters, and at the end of the day, they do a lot of computations and a lot of calculations, so that's why the GPU is required. So, that's fine, and then you can expose those models as an endpoint in your machine. Actually, let me show you that. So if I execute this foundry model load, and I pass the model ID that I want to run in this machine, you can see that this is gonna load the model, the GPU version of the model. So right now it's running, right? And I can go ahead and send some prompts, okay? So this is running as a service right now. There's another command for uh, displaying all the services that are running. In other words, the model was loaded and it's, and it's being exposed as an endpoint in this machine, okay? So the endpoint is on port, let me show you, port uh, 5273, okay? And it's exposing um, a standard chat completions endpoint. So you can use the regular standard JSON document for sending the prompt to the model and receive the response, okay? So let's try this. What are the largest cities in the world? And I'm sending this prompt to this endpoint and I'm using the GPU ID as you can see here on the screen, okay? So let's try to do this. And of course, this is working. Let me open up task manager and then let me show you this graph so we can see that the GPU is, you know, uh, working crazily, right, uh, for answering that prompt. What are the largest cities in the world? Which is fantastic that this model is using the GPU and not my CPU, right? So if I can, uh, if I can show you this, you can see the largest cities in the world by population and so on and so on, Tokyo, New Delhi, Sao Paulo, and those usual suspects, right? Uh, largest cities in the world. Fantastic. Now, what would happen if I run the GPU, I'm sorry, the CPU version? Let's try this. Of course, I need to load that model as well. So this is fantastic because Foundry Local allows me to run different models at the same time. Many different GPU ones, many different CPU ones at the same time. Of course, it depends on your hardware and computing power, right? So in this case, I'm just going to go back to the terminal and let me show you this. I'm gonna load CPU and this is gonna take a little while. Uh, and in the meantime, let me show you this other, oh, it ran successfully very fast, so there's no need for me to change the window. Now, the CPU version is running, and I can go to Postman, to this other tab that I already have here, for sending the same prompt to the CPU version of the model, and I'm gonna click Send, and What's gonna happen is that my laptop is gonna uh, start processing that prompt and you can see the spike going up for the CPU in this case, right? So you need to be careful about what kind of version you're running, what kind of hardware you have. In the kiosk retail space that I'm involved with, some kiosks, they don't have uh, any kind of GPU, we have to use CPU, so we're constrained in a lot of ways for running this kind of models. The answer sometimes is distill models that you can load in Foundry Local, that's, that's um, possible as long as you save those models as an Onyx compatible model, okay? Onyx is a, um, a format 
So if you save the model, you save the neural network in a non-X format, you will be able to load that model using Foundry Local. So let's go back to Postman and let's see that, okay, Tokyo, New Delhi, Sao Paulo, and the usual suspects are there, the largest cities in the world. Speaking of which, let me show you the services, I'm sorry, the models. Where are those models located? You may be thinking. Let me show you this other command, Foundry, is that cache? So cache is showing me the entire list of models that I have here. And I also have this other command, which is location. And it's telling me, hey, you know what? The models are located in your home folder in Windows and then dot foundry cache models. So let's go there, home, and then dot foundry foundry cache models. And right there, you can see that this is a uh, structure by um, the author of the model because I'm using phi and those models are by Microsoft. And if I show you the structure here, you can see that the neural networks are there. Let's change the folder to this particular one. And at the end of the day, the binaries are there, okay? This is connected to the fact that you can load your own models as long as those are Onyx compatible, okay? Perfect. Now, um, finally, in this session, I want to show you that you're running your models using, using Foundry Local, you're exposing those, model, those models as endpoints, so you can use your regular large language models frameworks for using those models. You can use LangGraph, you can use LangChain, you can use Semantic Kernel, you can use whatever you like, okay? In this case, uh, in the interest of time, let me see if I can go ahead and create a .NET application in two minutes. Maybe I want .NET new console and then test my Foundry local or something. And then um, I can switch to this directory, add the required uh, NuGet package, such as uh, Microsoft semantic kernel. And of course I need to add the package and then write the code. I can do that, but I prefer to show you the final uh, result because, I mean, in two minutes, it's um, quite difficult to create this code. Um, however, you can see that I'm using the model ID, right? I'm using this endpoint, right? And then I'm using the add OpenAI chat completion method for setting up the kernel, my semantic kernel, I'm telling the kernel, hey, you know what, I want to use OpenAI's endpoints. And then I'm just preparing the things. I'm telling Semantic Kernel, hey, you know what, um, you are a helpful AI assistant. Always end your messages and your responses with Foundry Local is awesome. And what are the largest cities in the world? I retrieve the iChat completion service instance, send the prompt, and basically that's it. So let me try this again. And you have to be careful that, of course, the model has to be running. And uh, yeah, I think it ran successfully. Or was this the other execution? Um, let me try again. Actually, let me try here in the terminal because I think it, it, you can see that better. Uh, test sk dot net build dot net run. Is this my application? Yes, dot net run. And again, this is just a small dot net application. I built that with, I don't know, in five minutes or something. And you can see that I'm receiving the responses, but those are coming from the local model, okay? I can even go ahead and disconnect from the Wi-Fi. 
there's no internet connectivity right now and I can go ahead and try to run this again and I'm gonna retrieve those responses from the local model, okay? Perfect, so amazing, right? Local large language models running in your machine. I think this is fantastic. There are so many scenarios that are solved and are required for this to be, you know, uh, where you can get a lot of benefits from running local uh, large language models. And thank you for, very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference, okay?